Hey Douglas County citizens, this is Mark Alcrez. Uh, welcome to District Dialogue. I am your District 4 Commissioner. Uh, today is, I begin my first District Dialogue uh, in wrapping up uh, Black History Month. I wanted to bring on three candidates, or three people that I know who have been pillars in this community uh, that I admire and, and I can call friends um, who have been pioneers in leading uh, Douglas County in the history of Douglas County and just leading us as a whole. And I would like to introduce them to you uh, this morning. And I'm going to start with, or with all the, my guests who I have here. I have Sheriff Tim Pounds. I have uh, Dorothy Sparks. And I have DT Jackson. And today, you know, we have, uh, you know, we, we know about them in regards to public servants and, and at Dorothy as a teacher, but so seldom do we get to find out who people are personally, you know, and I know all of you personally, and I just thought, you know, I would bring them in and have a conversation where our public, our, our citizens can know a little bit about each of you because each of you have um, a background that is very unique. Uh, D.T. Jackson, he served in uh, Vietnam from 1969 to 1972. Uh, he moved to our county, uh, to Douglasville in 1997. Uh, he was first elected to our Douglas County School Board uh, for District 2 in 2010, and he's now on his fourth term. Uh, he served as chair for our Douglas County School Board, being the first African American to serve on the Douglas County School Board and ch as chair from 2015 to 2016. And then we got Miss Dorothy Sparks, she was born and raised in Fair Play, which is District 4, which I'm pr proud to say. She was, she's graduated from uh, Clark, um, Clark College University in Atlanta, and she taught, in Doug she taught in our county from 1963 to 1965 for 32 years, but she was one of the first three African American teachers to be integrated in the Douglas County school system, and she taught at Douglas County High School starting in 1967. Then we got Sheriff Tim Pounds. He also was born and raised in Winston, uh, my, born and raised with a lot of my family in District 4. He graduated from Douglas County High School in 1975, and he started his career with the Douglasville Police Department in 1977, where he served for two years before he was hired by Sheriff uh, Earl Lee to come on to the Sheriff's Office, where he served uh, as for 40 years before he ran for Sheriff. Working his way all the way up to captain before he ran for sheriff, and I believe that was over the the warrants and uh, civil transport and fugitive fugitive division, and then became our sheriff, and now he is on his forty sixth forty sixth year of law enforcement. So that just to give you a little bit of background history on them as to you know uh, how how they got to where they are and the importance of it all, I thought I'd bring them here today to just have just a general conversation with them so you can learn a little bit more about them. And I'm going to ask, who would like to start first with some questions? Me. All right, so it'll be good with Sheriff. Sheriff, something probably some, a lot of people, and especially maybe some young people, want to know, especially during this, this day and age. What made you want to go into the line of field of law enforcement? Well, Mark, it started when I was a kid. It really started because of my father. My father was a security guard. He had a daytime job. We got off. He was a security guard. He worked at some retail store downtown Atlanta. And when he put his uniform on and his gun, I thought that was so cool. So I said, I'm going to be one of them. Then I found out what they do. I wanted to be a police officer. So I started working towards being that. And I went to work for this little service station here in Douglasville. And they service the Douglasville police cars change the oil and wash them, you didn't service them. And I got a chance to drive them back to the police station. And I liked that, so I wanted to become a police officer. And I started working on with every might I had. Matter of fact, I was still young. I went and asked, it used to be chief, which he's passed and gone on, was Charlie McClarty. Would he hire me? I wasn't even old enough to be a cop. He told me this though. He said, when you get old enough, he said, come back to see me. That's exactly what I've done. And he hired me as a Duckfield police officer. What about you, Miss Sparks? What made you want to take the career path of teaching? Well, 
my mother was kind of a teacher and she wanted me to be a teacher. And when I graduated from Clark College, I came out a year, a half a year earlier. And it just so happened that um, Mrs. Gobbs at R.L. Cousins was sick and Mr. Stewart, J.W. Stewart, was the principal and he knew I was finished with my course. So he asked me to come and take her place until she got well. And that was in January. So I stayed there from January to the end because she didn't get well. And then he came in one day and he said, well, I have your, your, uh, I have your uh, thing from Mr. Burnett, L.W. Burnett. He said, if you want to teach here, he'll go ahead and sign it today. And he'll sign, you can sign your contract. I said, okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I've been here since that time. And I, I went till out to 1995. That's when I retired. That was 32 years. Matter of fact, Mark, she was one of my teachers. <laughs> Matter of fact, I believe she was one of my mother's teachers, my, my father-in-law's teachers. <laughs> so, I know a lot of people who said <laughs> she was one of my teachers <laughs> and my wife's teachers. And uh, but that, that's interesting to find that out. Um, DT, you've I, I know you've had the career in in, in the army. And then, nope. uh, correct that. Marines. 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 <laughs> then you came out, and I know you went to work for a company in the in the collections division. Correct. What made you want to think to run for school board? How did you? How how was it brought to you to? In two thousand two. At that time, it was uh, city councilman Henry Mitchell. And he was the county, I mean, the uh, city councilman that represented my side of the track. And one night I called him, and I was reading so much sand with him. We was on the phone for two hours. So y'all don't do nothing for this side of the track. Only uh, the mall area and Chapel Hill. So we argued for about two hours. And he said, you know, you got all this mouth. Why don't you run for office? <laughs> That was in 2002. I didn't know anything about pol political game or how you can get involved. So from 2002 to 2004, I made it my business to learn how to play. I did that. And then in 2004, I ran for office first time. Didn't have a clue what I was doing. Got beat like a drum. And I can't stand to lose. Can't stand it. So I said, this is uh, this is no lie. I had Senator James, uh, Henry Mitchell. They was at my house. We were watching the uh, election return when the book final books came up, and I lost. I was like, "Oh, I'm not. No, no, we ain't taking this. I'm running again." My wife said, "But I didn't use those quite words." But. <laughs> My wife said, hey, we got company. And I said, well, then I'm going to repeat it so y'all can understand it. <laughs> so from 2000, after 2006 to 2010, I, all I did was plan it while I was working full time, and I was planning to do it. And I did it in 2010 and beat uh, Jimmy Bartlett, who had served three terms, beat him. And then the rest of his history. <laughs> sheriff, <clears throat> you've been you've been now sheriff since twenty or twenty seventeen. Becoming sheriff, is it everything that you thought it would be? I mean, has the experience been what you thought it would be, or is it different than than what you imagined and before taking office? To a certain degree, I would say probably about 90% of it is what I thought it would be because I had uh, served on the three different sheriffs, and I served on two of those sheriffs, command staff. So I got a chance to meet them at the top up there inside, try to, how we gonna cut down on crime, and how many employees we needed, and stuff like that. So I had a good idea of what it was gonna be about. And, but that other 10%, <coughs> is where 
social media has changed us tremendously. It ain't, like a man told me not too long ago, it ain't a good day to be a police officer. Well, no matter what, you got to have law enforcement. You got to have it. And what I don't like is the way social media, that 10% I told you about, mm -hmm. how they try to dictate things. And everybody seemed to lean towards making social media happy. Social media ain't gonna run Douglas County Sheriff's Department. No. I ain't leaning that way. I'm gonna do what I was elected to do, and that's sure for this county. Everybody I'm gonna be treated fair and honest. They gonna be we all gonna be honest and take care of business. This is a community that we, as you just said earlier, we all born in it. This yeah. I mean what D T would, but Miss Dan and I were born in it, so there ain't nothing too much that we didn't see coming up to get to the point where we are today. So I got a good idea what it was going to be about before I ran. That's one reason why I really wanted to run, because I wanted to continue to grow in a positive direction. And that's what we do. Appreciate that, Sheriff. Yeah, I've learned quickly in a very short amount of time of taking office about social media. You know, there's a lot of things that I've learned that people see something or hear something they jump on it immediately without even having an idea, not even the slightest idea of what's really happening, what's really going on. But they want to voice a lot of opinions out there and make a lot of speculations that causes a little bit of an uproar here and there. And it's nowhere near the facts, nowhere near the facts. But Mr. Uh, DT, I mean, you, you've obviously been Vietnam in your career You've had a, I'm sure you've seen a lot of things and there's some things that probably impacted your life. Who had the greatest impact on your life and why? Other than my mother, uh, my high school principal, and my drill instructor. So, hmm. In that order. How did they, I mean, I know that they, they shaped who you are, but just looking back on, on your drill instructor, I mean, that just, did he, did he like change you or guide you into the way that changed your mindset as, you know, because obviously going into collecting, you know, going into collections division, you've got to be have a strong mindset. I do. And mm -hmm. surviving in Vietnam, you had to have a strong mindset. So he had to have uh, really made an impact to prepare you because I couldn't even imagine. I had an uncle who went over to Vietnam, and he, he did not come back the same. And, uh, when I was in boot camp, uh, Sergeant General, he was about as tall as that camera stand, about as dark as that camera, <laughs> mean as a whip. He was from South Carolina, did three terms in Vietnam. I used to think he was crazy all the time. I was like, okay. But I learned one thing in boot camp. If you listen and follow instructions, you got a good chance coming back home. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, and to demonstrate all of that, uh, I made rain come out of boot camp, I was a PLC. I made rain coming out of our, uh, ITR as infantry training. And then when I went to Vietnam, I came back as a sergeant. So I made sergeant and three years, which is unheard of, so. Ms. Sparks, <clears throat> I learned this, you know, not from your teaching class, but when you and I served on the DFACS board together, we got to know each other really well. And there's one thing that I've always admired about you. It was your faith and your religion. What role does faith play in your religion play in your life? Well, it's just, I remember when I was six years old, one of the members of our church passed and they buried her, the lady and I saw it and I said, I told my mother, I said, Mama, I'm just not gonna die. I'm gonna have to go in the ground like that. She said, well, if you live the right life, you won't have to worry about that. Six years old, scared me to death, you know. But, um, when I was eight, I joined the church and I was baptized. And ever since that time, I have been giving all of my time to God. And that's where I am now. I, if you don't know him, somebody needs to ask, you, ask somebody about him because he's good.
thing I've there's I can say that I know a handful of people when I say they live it they live it every day and that's one thing that I have always seen in you is you are the, you're the same every time I meet you or every time we're together anytime we talk on the phone you're always the same but uh, that's that's a quality that I've always just admired about you and uh, and I think that that's important for well you know I don't know how far I can go with this in regards to faith on the, the without somebody I'm sure saying something but I really don't care but it does play a it plays a huge role because but it's taken out of our society today and now look where we're headed down I fully believe that your next you you run you gonna run again yes sir run again what goal would or what would you like to achieve what do you see or did you like to have done in your next between now and the end of your next term continues bridging the gap between citizens and law enforcement work my heart out trying to keep the crime down and please believe me that's a job but I, today as you and I sit here and talk I think we're doing a fabulous job in keeping crime down and uh, I want the community when I leave to believe in Davis County Sheriff's Department I want them to believe in us I want to believe that we're honest I want to believe that we in it for them. And like I said about the children, our children won't be losing at such a fast pace. Our young men and women is who we are losing. If we don't get there and show them there's another way, we're going to lose some more. We got to get out there and we walk with them, talk to them, have events for them. And, uh, I got two or three programs that's, uh, that will benefit them, as Black DT said earlier, instruct them how to come through the world today, because please believe me, it's a changing world. Thing we used to do, what they got to do is different. But if they stay focused, and the education is number one, you got to stay focused on that education. And you got to stay focused on, if you're young enough to teach your child, it's your parents. You, it all start right there, Ma. It start at home. And I'm going to say this, and I ain't going to say it no more. And what I really would like to see accomplished, parents going back to being parents. The Bible tells you you can spank your kid. They think that's illegal, but it's not. Of course, you can't beat them up with two or four, but... You can still take your belt. You can spank your child, discipline your child for wrongdoing. You can. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Hey, we're just in an open we're conversation. Here. I'm not going to say anything. You, you what? I have two you children. got beat. Have, it. You I got beat. Then I have two children. Did you beat them? No. Spank them? No. Okay. But I didn't ask them. I ain't got to ask my baby. You you ain't them. But if you teach the child what you want the child to know. You don't have to hit him. You don't have to spank him. Miss Barker, you taught me a lot of things, but I ain't going to agree on nothing right there. <laughs> but you know why you're not going to agree on it? Because mm -hmm. you came up in a larger family. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had 11 boys and three girls. Okay. Somebody had to do something. <laughs> 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 I didn't even say that. Excuse me. Well, I agree with Chief Sparks. Uh, you know, I, what I think our main problem is right now, and it's not in Douglasville, it's uh, across, across the country. It's all over D.C. I said across the country. It's in Douglas too. You know, it, we don't leave Douglas out, we'll get to that in a second. But what, what the problem is, we got babies raising babies. Mm -hmm. And they want the school system to educate them but then they don't want to help them with their homework. Half of them can't even read. We can even talk about the math stuff because that's that's another story. But it's but how do we fix it? This is my favorite quote. How do we fix it? Well, let me clear up some what Miss Park said. Make sure they don't understand. I said everybody beat their children. I ain't what the sheriff said. 
the sheriff said it's not it's not illegal to spank your child. You can spank your child if he deserve it. You can still spank him. Well, and everybody got different had, beliefs on how they do that. Now, if if Miss Sparks work, thank God if her idea works, mm -hmm. I love it. It just didn't work with us. But I'm just saying. I understand. Be a parent. Mm -hmm. Be a parent. I understand. When you said 11, I understood. <laughs> <laughs> Be a parent. And I agree with what DC said too, that more. See, ain't no more big mamas and grandmamas. Mm -hmm. Ain't no more of them. Cause the grandmother's in the club with the daughters. And like he said, broken home. And we got to go back. And one more thing, DC, us as men, we got to step up. We have got to step up and do things that we normally wouldn't do. But now it's time. Because it's a team. We ain't, it's kind of like serving God. If you ain't got God, you ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. So if it's a teamwork, make the dream work. But if you get folks that don't want to be involved, like I have a thing called chat with the sheriff. You can call the sheriff and ask them anything you so desire. And when I have it at a place, I may have six folks come out. See the community, I tried to make my sheriff's office community a mirror of my community. They should come and least, like Mark said, when they set them on social media, they run with that. I want you to be able to come down to my office and sit down and say, this is what they said on social media. I can show you that ain't what happened. Social media is out to make money and gain ratings. That's all they out there for. They don't mean nobody no good for it, I'm concerned. That's all they out there for is ratings and money and lies. Because they can, they can take the truth and make a lie out of it and folk believe it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> when my wife and I were raising our two boys, you know, I, I, was, I was told a couple of times, I can't believe you do that. I, I told them, I said, if I'm paying for you a cell phone, I'm going to be able to look through that cell phone any time I want to. If I just walk in there and you're playing a video game and I pick up your cell phone, better not hear, what are you doing? No, I'm paying for that bill. I should be able to go through it any time I want to. I'm not saying that, you know, I've, I've been absolutely blessed with having two great boys that I can say has never given me and my wife an ounce of trouble. And I don't know how I was blessed. My oldest one, I, he, he's just got the biggest heart of anybody ever seen. But I'm not saying that we're perfect, but what my wife and I did, like what you were just talking about, is we made sure I was, I was their dad. I love them more than anything, but I wasn't their best friend. I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm here to make you, when I leave this world, I, kn I know that you're going to be a good man, and that's my job. That's my job. It, it isn't about letting you go run wild and free and do what you want to do. It's about making you to where you can stand on your own two feet and making you a good man where you can take care and you know what family values are. When I'm gone, I'll leave this where I ain't got nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. One thing I agree on, Mr. Sparks, I got seven children now, seven children. Great kids. And if you gave me two days to sit in here today and figure out how many times I got a whipping, I probably still wouldn't come up with a correct answer. But as you said earlier, but you never your my son is one of the best kids in the whole world. He got two women in his entire life. The girls, I bet I didn't whip either one of them three times in their entire life. But once you establish mm -hmm. what Mark said earlier, I'm your parents. I'm just here to make sure you do good when I'm gone. But there's certain things you simply can't do. Your age just won't allow that. But uh. It's, it's, it's coming, it's bringing about a change, Mark. Cause now the children, I wish I could ask my daddy, why? He told me to do something, that's what we had to do. I had, I had to go with that's it. it. And, and, and it's what they let allow them to happen, but that's fine as long as they still believe in their parents and try to stay focused, stay out of trouble. I and mean, we're two kind of folks out there, Mark, yeah. as followers and leaders. I try my best to tell all the children in the world to be leaders. Don't follow nobody because they may lead you down the wrong path. Yeah. 
since we're since we carried on on that conversation, I'm going to ask a question. Who was the biggest who who was the biggest influence in your life that made the biggest impact in your life? As DT said, my parents first of all, my mother and my father, mm -hmm. and after that, it was Sheriff Earl D. Lee. He was the mentor of mine. He took me. I was kind of like ODT. When I came in in law enforcement, that's what I wanted to do, but I worked for the city for two years, and you know, the city was so small, it wasn't very little you could do but patrol. But I wanted to grow in law enforcement. So I went down there and talked to him, and he gave me a job. And that's exactly what I did. I began to grow. He told me some things that nobody else would have told me. And they showed me things nobody else would have showed me. He was nice, but he wanted to firm and sure if you will ever, well, could have in your life. Because he don't like to tell you one time how to do it, and you got to be doing it like the way he said do it. He was my guy. He was my guy. I learned so much from that sheriff. He was fair, and he was honest. And you could see the time then, you could actually see it with your eyes as it was changing where it wasn't so nasty for African American folks. So he was even mentor of my life, my greatest influence was Earl D. Lee. Miss Sparks, in your whole teaching career of 32 years, what was probably one of your most rewarding experiences in your teaching career? What's one of the most, one of the best moments that you just, you would, that you had, whether it be, you know, with a student, something that transpired, what was one of the, what was one of the most rewarding or moments that you had in your 30s? I, I did. I had the pistol to cool. And I had a lot of situations like that. But I guess when I went on in 95, 1995, when I was coming out, I had teacher of the year, teacher of the county. And that made me feel kind of but I had already been teacher of the year several times in Douglas County High School. But at the end, I was teacher of the county. So that was something to think about. Mr. DT, being on the school board, <clears throat> I know that there's a lot of things that the school board has to deal with. <laughs> what would you say is probably one of the most difficult parts of your job? One, we started the first year I was on the board. Uh, he was one of my mentors, Mike Miller. And after every board meeting, he'll tell me what I did wrong or try to correct me or, you know, do it this way, do it that way. And then one night, after every board meeting, we used to go to Fabiano's, have a beer, and have a couple slices of pizza and a conversation. So one night he said, DT, I'm, I'm going to say something to you. I don't want you to take it the wrong way. I said, what's that? He said, uh, sometimes when you be in a meeting, you say stuff that make my hair stand up on the back of my neck. I say, really? Why is that? He said, you just do. I said, let me help you with that. Let me help you with, with that, that question. You're not used to people like me talking back to you speaking up and that after that we got along just wonderful what would you each of you just thinking back about through your life mm -hmm. what might be i'll start with you dt what would be what probably one of the most important lessons that you learned growing up just one of the most something that just stuck with you whether it be a, a hard lesson to learn because i know sometimes i've done some things and you know, you never forget, you know, okay, I took that, I went, the, took that approach the wrong way or I did this wrong, but just certain lessons you learned that changed your life so you knew how to look at it a little different. What was one of the most important lessons you've learned in your life? Follow instructions from uh, who's ever in charge, listen to what they have to say, accept it, and grow with their decision. I'll bet you, Ms. Sparks. My mom would always taught us to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I've 
follow that all of my life. Because I wouldn't treat anybody a way that I would not want to be treated. Sheriff? Sure. Tell me what Ms. Park said. Be honest, be who you are, say it, mean what you say, and do what you say. Be yourself at all times, regardless. Sometimes you don't be in trouble, sometimes you may not, but the best thing to be is stand on the truth. Got two more questions I want to ask of all of you. And I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to start with this one first because we was talking about the kids earlier. If you had an opportunity to sit down with a, someone, a child, that might be going down the wrong path, or talking to all the kids in general right now, if there's something that you could tell them, you know, to help guide them or change them and to, to rethink in the path they may be taking or may be going down, what would that be? Start with you, Sheriff. I would be, like I said earlier, education and focus. If you stay focused on really accomplishing a goal, first you got to make some goals to try to accomplish some goals. And most of like I told you earlier, there's followers and there's leaders. If that child you know going down the wrong road, you got to introduce him to some things that will put him on the right road if he sits there long enough and listens and want to abide by what you're trying to tell him. But if you pick one word out of the whole thing, it would be stay focused and believe in your dream and work at that dream at the best of your ability. How about you, Ms. Sparks? I know you've had plenty of time over your 32 years to consult and talk with children at that age to, to shape and form them, what, what would you say to these kids today? Because they're different than when they're you were really teaching them. <laughs> they're they're different. Really different. Mm -hmm. See, I even had somebody like this one right here. But, uh, well, <laughs> for those that don't know, Miss Sparks. But I'm kidding him. He, <laughs> Talk Sheriff Founds in school. <laughs> yeah, but he, he's a good guy. He just tried to give me a hard time sometimes, but you know, I had him. Sure. <laughs> But um, really, I, I, I don't really, I didn't really have a lot of problems with the kids in my class. I sent one kid to the office and he married my daughter. <laughs> Is that why you sent him to the office? <laughs> Trying to get him away from your daughter? No, no. <laughs> my daughter was leaving in the, in the and he, he walked out into the, um, he did this, he and Bit, uh, Deborah, Britt. That was his, fr his friend, they were talking. And when I'm teaching, I don't want anybody to talk. I want you to listen and then we'll discuss. So they were back there talking. I said, you guys want to close up or you want to go out? I said, we just walk on out. They thought I was going to say no. So they walked on down to the office. And that was uh, Roy, Roy Johnson. That's who married my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even know him then. <laughs> you know, but it's, it was. I just didn't have any real problems with kids. I really didn't. I remember one time, this little kid that was Greg Sewers. You probably forgot me, because he was one of my aides. We used to have teacher aides. Mm -hmm. And one kid came in late and said, and I said, why are you late? He said something small. He said, man, don't you talk to me sports like that. <laughs> and he said, oh, he was one of my aides. You had him, at that time, the hair was long. He had his long blonde hair. He said, don't you talk to me sports like that. <laughs> But the, everything was fine for me. I, I didn't have any real, a lot of real problems at all. Because I love my kids and they love me. Yeah. What about you, DT? If you could, if you could give a kid advice today. Well, I do it every day. I know you do. Uh, I have an organization, a nonprofit. It's called Peace. Mm. Peace stands for participate, educate a child everywhere. And I'll take a young man, can't do a bunch of them. I'll take a young man, one, and show you how to dress in public, pull your pants up, tie your shoes up. <laughs> and half of them don't even understand what it means, shoe shine. Oh, no. no. <laughs> they have no idea. Uh, 
one of my uh, little prodigies at church. Uh, he graduated from uh, turn, I mean, uh, Lithia Springs, and so I took him under my wing. I said, okay. So I called his, I called his dad first. And I said, uh, I'm gonna take your son shopping. He said, okay. So I dad talked to the mom because if you don't have both, if you don't have both pieces together, you got a problem. So I took him shopping, taught him how to dress. He, he's a very respectful child anyway. But some of the things that I've taught him, he's doing exactly now which makes me feel good. Absolutely. All right, last question. All three, uh, I've had a conversation with all three of you about politics in the past. We've, uh, we've all had a conversation about that. And one thing that I like about every single one of you is, I mean, if you look at our world today, we're so divided. We're so divided in not a, I mean, just also in our county, but uh, you know, nationwide. Democrat versus Republican. But, you know, it, it's heartbreaking at times because we see how tore apart, you know, we are. But there's something about each of you. You, you, you really just don't look and focus on one particular thing such as a party and this is the way it has to be regardless of whoever the candidate is. You've all stated that you always vote for the most qualified candidate. Do you, I mean, I, I know election times, another one's coming around here soon, but, and you just went through one, Sheriff's about to come up on one. Tell us why you believe, tell us why, or tell the citizens why you believe in, we shouldn't always just look, because I'm being honest, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to upset some Republicans, but yeah. if, they some, if there's a, a very qualified Democrat, and we're running a Republican that is just absolutely not qualified. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put our county they, into uh, a bad situation. They may may not because of that. Because I'm a true Democrat. I am, and I ran as a Democrat, and I continue to run as a Democrat. But as you said earlier, if I know beyond shadow of a doubt, there's a better. Republican than Democrat running for that position. So that's the good thing about being born and raised in this county. You you, you get to know folks yeah. on first name basis. You get to see what they've done before they even decide to run for office. You knew what kind of person they are. So why would I sit here knowing the county don't care about a party? The county cares about what person can do the best job for what they've been elected for. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that matters. They don't care about the color. They don't care about the party. They want a candidate that's going to do what he say he's going to do and know how to do what he said he was going to do. So if you look, if you're around looking for a party just to support a party because you're Republican, you got a problem. You know you got a problem now. I love Democrats. I love to support them. But if I got a better Republican, then I'll vote for that Republican. How about you, Ms. Sparks? I don't think I would do that. I'm just kidding. That's you. I spoke 10 pounds. You know what I said. <laughs> yeah, I would. I vote for the candidate. I really would. I'm, I'm, I'm a Democrat. But if I see a Republican then, that they are running for an office and they're doing well, I will vote for them. But I am a Democrat. What about you, DT? Definitely a Democrat. Got registered to vote, went straight out of high school, and got registered to vote. And I've been voting ever since. I haven't missed any. Uh, but you a perfect example. He asked me, uh, would I support it? Yes. And did it publicly. Mm -hmm. When he got sworn in almost a month ago, Two months ago now, when you got sworn in, I stood up and hugged him. He did. Oh, he didn't tell me about that. <laughs> he did. Right down on the front row. 
I got the picture. Yeah, I know. I saw. I heard about it. I said, I'm going to get him about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, I did. And it's a... Uh, part is a light state. You can go to Food Depot. I'll use them for an example. They serve... They just serve uh, select grade. Go to Publix, uh, Kroger, Ingles, they all serve choice and prime. So why would I go buy a steak and spend $12 for it at Food Depot and I can spend $13 and get a good steak and enjoy it? But I need to know what are you going to do for me and my county and my constituents? And my constituents, and I said it when I got sworn in, uh, I got 27,000, 28,000 kids. They all mine. And I claim them. I got 3,400 step children. That's the teachers and the staff. <laughs> so it's uh, children come first, then the party come after. It's like. Uh, Remember on our board right now. I know he's running again in two years. I'm definitely supporting. And I know he's a Republican. But he's done an outstanding job since he's been on board. And I don't mind helping him and I'll support him. I just can't vote for him, but that's all right. I got a voice out there right now. Yep. Well, I want to thank every one of you for taking the time to come and do this with me today. It's my first district dialogue and not a single one of you hesitated when I called. You, each one of you said, absolutely, I'll be there. Just tell me when and where. And uh, that really meant a lot to me and I, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I know that uh, because of our community and the involvement that each one of you have had in it, our community is better for it. It's, it's definitely better. You guys have come in and definitely have helped shape and as I said earlier, you are pioneers of this county and you've really made an impact. And I wanted to bring to you guys in so our citizens can know a little bit something else about you besides sheriff, teaching career, board member. You know, we never take the time to actually get to know someone. And like I said earlier, I, I know all, all of you a little bit more than, than most and uh, thank a lot of you all and I really appreciate you taking your time to come out and spend this day with me. And I hope the citizens of Douglas County have enjoyed this and uh, my district dialogue will not be for another three months, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for being with us today. <laughs> <laughs>